Like I, if I went to, if I read the synopsis about this at a festival and then I went to see it and then like, I was with my mom or some shit, like, you know, like, I just feel like that had to have happened to somebody or just some old people that were like, what the hell is this? I'm walking out. Open their eyes to the realities of pedophilic corruption. Do you feel like you're being watched? What's up, YouTube? It's Drive By Movies here, and you are watching Fresh Releases. My name is James. My name is Blizz. And today we are checking out the new film from Shudder, The Scary of 61st. <laughs> The scary of 61st entails two roommates whose lives are upended after finding out that their Manhattan apartment harbors a dark secret. So the scary of 61st, I felt like came completely out of left field. It was a film that I hadn't heard about it. You mentioned it like, oh, let's check this out. I was like, oh, it's Shudder. But then I go to Shudder, it's not on there. It's another <laughs> one of these seance uh, <laughs> experiences. Yeah. yeah, like where we have to then go and rent the movie, even though we both have Shutter accounts. It's just like, okay, whatever. They got it. It's like they got us again. But I understand, I guess, the distribution deals with Utopia to do like a theatrical. I don't see this movie playing in theaters beyond festivals, though, to be completely honest. And then also home video or uh, video on demand and then Shutter gets the exclusive streaming rights once that laps, probably after a couple months. So anyways, James, what'd you think of this movie? Yeah, so um, I checked, or I first heard about it at Beyond Festival is one of the trailers that they were showing when I went to go see, uh, um, what movies did I see at Beyond Fest? I saw um, uh, VHS 94, that was the main one that I went to go see. And this trailer was playing, Beyond Fest always shows trailers. And I did see it was playing in a couple theaters in LA. If you're from LA, like you would think the go-to like indie theaters are the landmark and stuff like, no, this played at the Lemley in NoHo, I'm pretty sure. And I love the Lemley, honestly. Like. Uh, I love like going to their theater, like the one that's on Santa Monica Boulevard. I forgot the name of that one. I think it's called the Royal Theater, but that theater is a lot of fun. We saw Shin Godzilla there. We've seen countless other indie movies there as well too. But uh, this definitely seems like one that plays in that like 20 theater room at uh, Lemley Santa Monica or something. Uh, and just like somehow like there's like two other people in there and they're either laughing or they walk out on it. Like one of those style movies. Um, Cause yeah, I did want to check it out and I can see why it's getting a lot of hate and I also see why it's also getting a lot of praise. It, but me, for me, I'm just in the middle kind of. There's a lot I liked about it and there's a lot I laughed at, but I'm also offended that I was like, found this movie funny at the same time because the material is pretty dark and it is a funny movie and I did like it, but I also don't like it too. What are your thoughts? I don't even know, to be completely honest. I I, th I mean, I'm probably along the same lines as you. I think I liked aspects of the fact that a lot of people are watching this movie just because like, what the hell? Like, is good. Like, is that how bad movies have gotten where people are talking? I'm not saying that this is a bad movie per se, it but I'm just saying like, like <laughs> it kind of is. But like, I'm just saying like, have movies gotten so bad that I'll, like, I don't feel like a lot of people are talking about this, but I feel like more than this film would ever get like, this is right before Sundance, like Sundance is this week, but like this is right before Sundance and like somehow this is still in the conversation where like we're not really hearing too much about those movies, I guess. And that's a virtual festival right now. So like, I feel like that's even kind of weirder that like anyone can watch those movies because it's a virtual festival. We aren't really hearing too much about them. And the ones we're hearing about are just loaded with stars to where you're questioning like, is this really like a Sundance movie or of old or is this the Sundance of new? But anyways, this is a festival movie. Felt like I should mention Sundance it's hap since it's happening right now. But yeah, I feel like I like the aspects of the fact that people are kind of talking about this movie because it is so strange. I, I like that it's all shot on film. I think the story is honestly a mess. Uh, and I kind of like that aspect. But then like, I think an overwhelming uh, part of the movie is like strangely horny. And it's not that, it's not that I didn't like that, 
but it was just pointless, you know? <laughs> like, I was just like, what the fuck is going on? Like, this is so, this movie is just so weird. I feel like almost the only reason that people are talk talking about it or that it's gotten onto people's screens is because it's so horny. Yes. Uh, I definitely would say that this is like a very ambitious movie. Like, there's always that like cool guy or cool girl that comes up with a really cool plot in film class. Be like, but how are we going to shoot that and stuff? And that seems like this movie right here, uh, where it was such a great idea. And I would have lost my like crap hearing about this in like film class and stuff. And kudos for them for going out to make this movie. But did they succeed? Like, kind of. I mean, they're probably going to. She's I guarantee she's going to get like a another deal with shutter soon like yo what else is on your mind like let's see what you got and stuff uh because i'm very curious to see what she goes on to make uh this is her debut film i know she has a lot of success with the podcast and i know that she's also on the show succession that i know is very popular but uh, as a filmmaker like this is a like a interesting debut but i don't know like it just comes off so weird to where it's like so bad that you have to see it to believe it because they do have all the right influences i'd say like the cinematography is interesting i love that they decided to go with 16 millimeter film uh some of the cuts and takes are like interesting it feels it feels like a very natural 70s 80s gala movie but just like but also though, it's just really badly done though and like at times like i'm like okay this acting is definitely intentional to be funny and comedic but also just some like the writing the overall plot synopsis and the like horny actions that you're bringing up i'm just like what is the purpose over this overall though? is this just shock factor like what is this serving what's your overall end goal with like the final minute of this movie and stuff like i was like okay that was that's something but like what though maybe i just didn't understand it but yeah. So I actually have a small theory about this film. I feel like it's it might come off a little weird, but I honestly feel like the reason that this film has gotten so far, I didn't actually know that she was on Succession until now. So maybe that it was just nepotism of how this got like, because honestly, is this really a festival movie? Like I, if I went to, if I read the synopsis about this at a festival and then I went to see it and then like, I was with my mom or some shit like you know like I just feel like that had to have happened to somebody or just some old people that were like what the hell is this I'm walking out apparently it's dry seems... walkouts yeah oh for sure it's like this this is definitely shock factor but I feel like nepotism got it onto that scale and then and now it's just like a shock movie I think that movies have been like like sex in movies we all know is like pretty much basically disappeared so this film that takes it almost like too far in an, in an extent which could be offensive to a lot of people, especially because they haven't seen that stuff recently. I feel like that's what's kind of building the traction that it's getting. None of this stuff was honestly shocking to me. And except the only thing that was shocking and disturbing was really just like some of the scenes where the girl's in front of like a building. Like that was just like, all right, this is just going too far. It's like weird, like it's uncomfortable. But some of the like more scenes where it's like two people making love didn't really bother me. And honestly, it did remind me of like something like Joe Swanberg would make, but a lot of that stuff didn't total, like not all that stuff really went to festivals. So I don't know. I think mainly it had to do with programmers that saw these people putting it all, all out on the line and uh, had to give them, you know, an entry, I guess. <laughs> Especially also like if, you know, this recently came out, I know the festival was at was the Berlin Film Festival. Uh, we are still in quarantine. Uh, I'm not sure how Berlin and the rest of Germany was handling the, you know, the quarantine situation and COVID as well. But, you know, the fact that they had a film festival is great, but I'm not sure if it was ran the same way that Sundance is being ran. Was it like online? Was it in person? I haven't done the research on that, but like kudos for, you know, the word that they got and, you know, the talk it's brought, it made Shutter buy it. So that's still like, like pretty huge and i'm glad that like shutter put it out it's a very different movie like the idea to make a plot synopsis around jeffrey epstein's like you know old apartment in new york city it's like such an interesting idea but just like you know i, I felt like there was more to do with it like making it supernatural i felt like was like a little dorky <laughs> at times but like like the overall like possession moments like i liked the whole mystery and aura and maybe the bad feeling of being in there and stuff but just like then when it gets to the possession stuff there is some cool moments with it but just doesn't work out especially with the the weird like 
uh, masturbation sequences with it, where it's just like kind of comes off as like shock factor, especially like I know it's like throwing in like some of the people who were involved with Jeffrey Epstein. I know that she has like a picture of a prince on there or someone from Royal. I know prince that, like, Andrew. Prince so Andrew. There we go. Prince that Andrew's cool. in a lot of hot water at the moment. And yes. I, all that stuff kind of really came off a little cringy, to be completely honest. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's probably what got this film sold. But really, for me, it was just super cringe. Like, it is I don't know. It was just like, I like the way the film looks. Yeah. But a lot of that stuff just felt so cringe. I don't know. I Especially because, like, yeah, it. it's pretty funny. Like, like, uh, like, I know some people are comparing it to The Room. It's not like that level where it's so bad that it's entertaining. It's just like it is like over the top and like the acting is so overly dramatic to where it comes off comedic. And I was cracking up throughout the whole movie. It's hilarious. I would say like, yeah, this movie's actually really funny. Like, check it out, like with a bunch of drinks for the comedy factors, but for hardcore horror fans, I'd say only uh not for your normal comedic person but though just like when you really think about it you're like you know this is still so recent like a lot of these you know young people who are you know sex slaves at, the, at such a young age like you know they're still just my age technically and stuff and you know they're still around and still doing interviews about this stuff so if you feel bad like i feel like a piece of shit for kind of laughing at this movie at times and somewhat enjoying it but like i said i also don't like this movie too it's really hard to like pinpoint it yeah, and one thing I think, like, honestly, the biggest thing for me when it comes to disliking this movie is just how ridiculous the setup is in the beginning of the movie. Honestly, the setup is just fucking ridiculous. Like, I feel like you could have done that a little bit better, but come on. Like, that's the, that's the thing where I lose, like, any type of, like, trust with the filmmakers. Like, their setup is really just somebody walking into somebody's house and then being, like, cool with it and then all of a sudden becoming, like, best friend. Like, it's just so weird. I thought that was just so stupid. Like, it's just, like, lazy. Like, you couldn't, you couldn't do that any other way. Mm -hmm. And a hookup scene, and then, like, finally after the hookup and them hanging out for a whole day, like, what is even your name? I'm just like, oh, my God. Like, yeah. <laughs> and then, like, I remember opening up Letterbox, like, oh, yeah, her name is The Girl. Of course, like, yeah. I mean, I'm so bad at remembering names regardless, but, <laughs> yeah, it's a great point. Yeah, I, I think that had to, I mean, honestly, I, I'm going to give them, like, the benefit of the doubt. I think obviously that was probably the biggest joke right there was just how ridiculous like the setup is in this film and just even them like alluding back to it, like you mentioned in certain parts of the script. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like if this pops up on Shudder, maybe, but this is just such a niche movie that I don't really know who this is made for. Yeah. Uh, yeah, not too much, honestly. Like I'd say if you have ever heard of Beyond Fest, we've mentioned it, I think three or four times over the past couple of months and stuff like this movie might be up your alley if you're into that scene and stuff but still it's not for everyone um but let us know you know go check out the movie for for yourself form your own opinion it'll make its way to shutter eventually but as of right now be sure to check it on amazon you can check out it out through our amazon affiliate link in our description box below and let us know in the comments what you thought about the scary of 61st and if you guys haven't already, go ahead and smash that like button, hit the subscribe button, and click the notification bell to get all of our latest updates. And if you can't get enough of us here on YouTube, be sure to check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. You can catch all our links down below in the description box. Anyways, that'll conclude this week's episode. Tune in next week for a brand new video.